We are witnessing a race to establish humanity's home in space. The giants, such as the ISS and Tiangong, already define the landscape. Soon, new contenders like Vast, Axiom, Orbital Reef, and Starlab will enter the competition. So which name is missing from that list? SpaceX, the industry leader, will not stand on the sidelines. In the realm of space stations, the company is pursuing a bold and unprecedented concept, an artificial gravity station built around the core structure of its enormous launch system, Starship. This vision pushes the capabilities of Starship to extraordinary new levels. So how does SpaceX plan to bring this remarkable station to life? Let's explore the answer in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's clear that SpaceX is reshaping the aerospace industry through the development of Starship. This vehicle, with its immense scale, extraordinary power, and fully reusable architecture, is poised to become the largest and most capable transport system ever created for both Earth and and space operations. Its design promises extremely high velocities, dramatically reduced costs, and a level of operational frequency that far exceeds anything currently achievable. Because of these capabilities, Starship can support a wide range of functions, including serving as a foundational element for future lunar and Martian bases. However, there is another concept that is equally fascinating. Starship could also become a space station. Is such an idea even feasible? The answer is absolutely yes. A Starship configured as a station module would be launched in much the same way as any other spacecraft intended for long-term orbital operations. Once in orbit, it would function by continuously circling Earth like a traditional station. SpaceX would equip it with a custom thruster system beforehand to ensure stable orbital maintenance. Meanwhile, all habitation systems, life support infrastructure, and interior outfit would be constructed directly on Earth, similar to how a crewed Starship is prepared. From an engineering standpoint, converting Starship into a station module is not very different from preparing it for human-rated missions. So what is the motivation behind transforming Starship into a space station? To understand the reasoning, we can begin with basic calculations. The upper stage of Starship stands approximately 50 meters tall and 9 meters in diameter. Out of that total height, the actual habitable section might only occupy the upper 22 meters. Yet even with that limited area, SpaceX could generate roughly 1,400 cubic meters of usable volume by applying the standard formula for the volume of a cylinder. Accounting for the tapered shape of the nose cone, the practical interior space would likely fall between 1,100 and 1,200 cubic meters. This means that a single starship could already exceed the entire internal volume of the current International Space Station, which is about 1,000 cubic meters. And this is only the beginning. When Starship is treated as a station module rather than a rocket stage, the design becomes far more flexible. Engineers could remove the propellant tanks, reinforce structural sections, and expand the pressurized interior significantly. By using the full height of an upgraded Starship variant, the available volume could reach more than 3,300 cubic meters in the version 3 configuration with a 52 meter height and more than 3,800 cubic meters in the V4 configuration with a 61 meter height. These figures represent the capacity of just one Starship, a complete Starship-based station would not rely on a single module. Many proposed concepts envision a large rotating system with artificial gravity. In these designs, a central hub is surrounded by multiple starships arranged in a circular formation, each connected to the central module by radial cables. The number of starships in such a configuration could reach into the dozens. When multiplied by the volume of each individual starship, the total pressurized volume becomes extraordinarily large, far surpassing anything built before. There are also major economic advantages Advantages. Traditional station modules require highly specialized manufacturing, custom materials, and extremely expensive launch vehicles, often resulting in costs that reach hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars per module. Starship, however, is constructed using cost-efficient and reusable stainless steel structures. This approach dramatically reduces both the cost of building the modules and the cost of placing them into orbit. As a result, long-term growth, scalable expansion, and continuous upgrades become far more practical. It's impressive, right? Yet size is only one of the advantages of this concept. The central idea I want to highlight is artificial gravity. 
The absence of gravity is one of the defining features of space and it creates major challenges for daily living, scientific research, and astronaut health. This issue is one of the most studied obstacles in space exploration and it becomes increasingly critical as our missions grow longer and our presence in space expands. A Starship-based space station could become a pioneering step towards solving this problem. As previously mentioned, the proposed system would function as a rotating wheel in orbit. This configuration not only expands habitable volume, but also enables the creation of artificial gravity. The system would rotate around a central hub with multiple starships arranged around it. As the station spins, centrifugal force would be generated across the outer modules. This force would mimic the effects of gravity, providing a gravity level ranging roughly from 0.3 to 1 g, depending on rotation speed and radius. The advantages of using Starship lies in its size. Each module is exceptionally large, and the overall diameter of the rotating system could be enormous. A larger diameter means the artificial gravity effects gravity effect can be achieved with a slower and more stable rotation rate. Smaller systems require rapid spins that can trigger motion sickness or disorientation. A large Starship-based design avoids these issues and produces a more comfortable and natural experience for long-term residents. This idea is not just speculation from aerospace enthusiasts. It has been discussed directly by Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX. He noted that Starship will likely introduce rotation during long-duration missions, stating, Starship will have a small spin on the way to Mars. Even a tiny gravity vector is better than none. If this partial gravity concept can be scaled into a full station, one of humanity's greatest barriers to living in space could be overcome. If artificial gravity is achieved, living conditions in orbit would begin to resemble life on Earth far more closely. The most important benefit would be the preservation of astronaut health. With gravity restored, bone density loss, muscle atrophy, and cardiovascular strain could be dramatically reduced. This would allow astronauts to travel or live in space for far longer than the current average of about six months. Longer stays reduce the frequency of crew rotation missions, cut costs, and expand what is possible in scientific research and exploration. Daily life would also become simpler and more intuitive. Basic activities such as eating, showering, and using the restroom could be performed without specialized harnesses, restraints, or complex equipment. Artificial gravity would provide a level of comfort that improves both the physical and psychological well-being of inhabitants. For researchers, artificial gravity would make experiments more predictable and enable studies that are currently impossible in microgravity environments. However, developing such a system also introduces substantial challenges. Constructing and deploying this hardware would demand enormous time, labor, and financial financial investment. Next, activating the rotation of a station at such a scale would require extremely powerful thrusters. The initial spin-up would be a major engineering feat. Even once rotation is established, maintaining a steady rate would be difficult. So are you looking forward to SpaceX pursuing the Starship Gravity Space Station? If you're excited about the possibility, feel free to respond with why not in the comment section down below and continue following the unfolding journey of SpaceX's future developments. Now that we have covered the overall structure and operating principles of the Starship-based space station, it's time to step inside and examine the systems that will directly support human life in orbit. Because Starship offers an immense internal volume, SpaceX can design living environments capable of accommodating far more people than any previous station. Even within a single module, the interior can be divided into functional zones that closely mirror the amenities we rely on here on Earth. Beginning at the lowest levels, or what could be considered the horizontal horizontal foundation of the module, the area farthest from the command deck would serve as the primary storage and utility section. This zone would hold tools, maintenance equipment, scientific instruments, and hardware essential for exploration. A portion of the station's supply cargo could also be stored here for easy access. In addition, the essential utility systems for the module, including electrical distribution units, power converters, and water management infrastructure, would be housed in this lower section. Moving upward, we reach the dining area. This section would support the astronauts' daily meals and function as a 
communal gathering point. The spacious interior also makes it possible to integrate hydroponic or aeroponic gardens, enabling crew members to grow fresh, nutritious produce while in orbit. These gardens would not only be supplemental for food supplies, but also serve as a relaxing and therapeutic activity for those who enjoy caring for plants. Above the dining area lies the fitness zone. Even with artificial gravity, exercise remains essential for maintaining muscle strength, bone density, cardiovascular health, and overall physical well-being. This area would feature advanced workout equipment, including weight machines, treadmills, rowing stations, and pull-up systems. To enhance convenience, bathrooms and restrooms would also be located in or near this level, allowing astronauts to easily transition between daily routines and exercise sessions. Adjacent to the fitness area are the sleeping quarters. These private cabins would be designed to maximize comfort and efficient use of space. Each astronaut would have a personal room that provides privacy, sound insulation, and a calming environment comparable to a small bedroom. These quarters would support sleeping, personal activities, communication with family, and essential downtime. Near the nose of the spacecraft sits the communal living and observation area. This is where activities involving teamwork, exploration planning, or physical exertion would take place. The section would feature wide viewing windows or dedicated observation instruments, enabling astronauts to monitor Earth, conduct visual research, or simply experience the inspirational views of space. At the very top, within the spacecraft's nose, is the central control zone. This area contains the operational systems that manage navigation, communications, station coordination, and system diagnostics. It would also serve as the primary meeting space for mission briefings, strategic planning, and research discussions. Additional specialized research rooms could be situated here to support ongoing scientific studies. This detailed layout describes the interior of a single Starship module, which could already surpass the functionality and capacity of traditional space stations, including the ISS. As SpaceX expands to a multi-module rotating station composed of multiple starships, the layout could become even more sophisticated. Functions could be separated into dedicated modules, creating entire starships devoted exclusively to research, habitation, agriculture, recreation, or operations. In any configuration, the concept represents a remarkable leap forward. In any case, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.